So hi, welcome to SunnyCon's YouTube. I'm here with John Swayze, voice actor extraordinaire for 20 years now. <laughs> well seasoned. Thank you. Yes. That's um, what they call it well seasoned. <laughs> so um, first question is obviously how did it all start for you? Uh, yeah, so um, you know I, I graduated from college in '87 and uh, got into acting and then sort of fell into doing commercial work in Houston and really enjoyed. Uh, uh, using my voice and realized that it could be somewhat lucrative and then uh, so I started doing a lot of commercial work and then um, around 1996 uh, I auditioned for a little old company in Houston Texas called AD Vision uh, which just turned out to be the number one producer of anime in North America so I was able to uh, sort of along with a lot of other multi-talented actors uh, was able to parlay that into a nice little career and then uh, Funimation got started as well in uh, Dallas and started working up there. And now Texas is sort of, uh, if not the mecca, one of the meccas for doing anime voice work in the in North America. So it's been it was just happened to be in the you know right place at the right time. So if uh, anime constantly evolving, I mean now we're seeing things like simulcasts with uh, Funimation, where we're seeing dubs released every week now. Uh, where, where do you think uh, the, the whole industry will be going from there? Wow, that's a great question. You know, when I, I remember when I first started, they were releasing, you, you would get a VHS tape, a videotape, you know, big brick, and there might be three episodes on it. And so that's how they recorded them. You were only recording three episodes at a time. And then, then when DVDs came out, that was a big, ooh, DVDs, you can put a whole season on a DVD. And uh, I remember talking to Matt Greenfield, who was one of the founders of AD Vision. And I could not wrap my head around this, but he goes, like, I don't know if you have them here, but we have stores called Best Buy, which is a record appliance and computer store, that kind of thing. And um, he said, you know, you won't go into Best Buy anymore to buy a DVD. You'll go in with your little thumb drive and plug it into a wall and download a movie and take it out with you. And I was like, that is so wild. Well, we didn't even do that step. We just hyper jumped right over into downloading off your computer, you know. So, um, and then uh, with the, so I've, I've seen this transition of amazing uh, technology just folding over on itself and being able to release this stuff. Well, the, one of the, the, the caveats to this business in anime is your, your base group, your marketing base are the kind of people that know how to pirate. <laughs> they know how to navigate around a computer pretty well, you know? Yeah. So uh, that was unfortunate, but I think, you know, with the, the uh, simulcast releases and things like that, you know, they're getting away from it. Plus, I also think people are, I mean, you'll always have some piracy, but I think people are really getting, you know, it's, it's not a victimless crime. I mean, it's stealing. Oh, yes. And if you're stealing and people aren't making money, they're just gonna quit doing it. So you're gonna run it, but, so I think we've gotten beyond that. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think what you may see is uh, maybe uh, more American production of anime. A lot more, lot more work for Texas. Yeah, right, right. But, I mean, actually being produced here, or not here, I'm in England, but being produced locally in the States, you know. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, a, it's definitely the, the when I started doing this in uh, 1996, you know, I didn't even know what anime was. And convention-wise, there were maybe one or two conventions a month. Well, here we are in 2017, and there's probably well over 200, 250 conventions a year. That's quite a number. Sometimes weekly. <laughs> there's four, five, and six a week, you know, all over the world. And well attended in all different sizes. Everything from, you know, I've been to a convention as small as 300 people, and I've been to a convention as large as 27,000 people, you know, and, and everything in between. So it, I think the conventions are really what are driving this now, you know, because they're bringing all these people together. And, and, and this is a very long answer. You're going to have to edit this. But oh, no, okay. there's, uh, there's so much crossover now, you know. It's not just anime. It's sci-fi, anime, horror, Marvel, Star Wars, video games, everything, you know. I mean, we had a, we had a parade of Star Wars characters all day today. You know, Darth Vader, Princess Leia, Star Troops, 
Boba Fett, you know, just all these um, people, and it's just amazing, you know, and they all love it. And so um, it, it's, it's just going to continue to grow, in my opinion, and get bigger and bigger. Are there any noticeable differences from U.S. conventions to what it is over here in the U.K.? Just the accents. <laughs> I mean, it really is funny because, um, you know, the kids are the, the, the same. You see uh, amazing, um, amazing cosplay, you know. And my favorite cosplay is when you see somebody who's made something, you know. And I know that in the cosplay industry, you know, there's people make them and sell them, and that's fine. But I really love it when somebody, you know, go. they went to the hardware store and they bought PVC pipe and they bought some foam and they bought this and constructed it and painted it and did all this craftsmanship themselves. It really is amazing when you see some of the stuff. So, uh, but overall, I mean, the conventions uh, from, from state to state, uh, city to city, country to country, if, you, if nobody said a word, I really wouldn't know the difference because um, an anime, that, that breed of fan, uh, they're all fiercely loyal, and uh, they're, you know, they all kind of walk the same walk and talk the same talk, and like I said, it may just be a different accent, but... Yeah. Well, so, what's the funniest accent you've heard this weekend? <laughs> the funniest accent, I must say, that I heard this weekend was uh, when my wife and I arrived to Doncaster on Thursday night. Uh, the next day, we went up to York. And uh, we're walking around, just loving it. We went to the uh, shambles, and you know, we went to Guy Fox Inn and doing all this stuff. Well, we went to Yorkminster, and uh, we're just blown away by the the size of it and the beauty of it, and you know, it's an amazing accomplishment of, of building ingenuity. But we took a tour guide, a guided tour, I should say. And our tour guide was a lovely young lady. I think she was Japanese. And her English was not great, but she was also struggling with a British accent. So it, some of the words I was like, what? <laughs> you know, it'd be like, so in the charge, we were going, you know, what? <laughs> but she did fine. And I, I'm certainly not trying to make fun of her, but it was just, it was the most unique accent I heard. So you've enjoyed your time in the United Kingdom here. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's come free. For us, it's been a great convention. It, it has been a fabulous convention, you know. Um, I mean, going out last night with you guys and, and having dinner was a blast. And just, I like to, one of the reasons I love conventions, you know, is uh, I like to get a chance to meet new people, but meet the fans, meet, make new friends, you know, um, because the, the thing about conventions that I really like is that the people here are all, no one's judgmental, no one, it's all accepting, you know, it, it's, I, I have a little saying that people like to be with their own tribe, and I think that's very true at an anime convention, I, I liken it to a Grateful Dead concert it's and I'm a big deadhead but it's you know when you go there it's you're, you're all there for the same reason it's a collective you know and, and everyone is there to have fun you know you could be at an anime convention and somebody could be walking around dressed in nothing but shaving cream and no one would care they just go well that's kind of cool until it melts and then you're like oh okay now that's a little risky but um, it, it, it's just so much fun and it's so much fun to be around uh, these people that are also like-minded you know and, and I Personally, I learn a lot about, because, you know, when we go into a recording, uh, we, we, um, we don't often know what we're doing, or we may not know much about the show, especially if we're just doing bit characters, you know. If we're a lead, that's one thing. But I do a lot of uh, minor characters, you know. So uh, uh, Todd Habercorn might be the lead in a show, and I might be five other characters, you know. Uh, unless it's a bigger show. I mean, some, you know, Lord Death and Soul Leader and stuff like that, I, I obviously are bigger roles. But um, I learn a lot coming to these conventions from the fans about the show I'm doing, you know. And uh, so it's, uh, it's just a great experience, man. It really is. Um, last thing, uh, we've heard that there was a part missed out in Borderlands 2, uh, a certain line. <laughs> could, could you confirm what, what that line was? Sure, sure. <clears throat> so... When he's uh, Gunzerkering, and is you know he's like this, and the line was actually cut from the game, never made it into the game to my knowledge. Um, he has this sort of 
orgasmic experience. And his line is, it's like having three dicks. And uh, I don't know if you have to bleep that out or not. But, um, but what, was, what was really funny is, you know, I tell that story and everyone laughs and it's all funny and everything. I was at a convention in Miami. And, uh, you know, a lot of times at conventions, fans will come up and they'll, you know, they've drawn something or they've made something. Or, you know, somebody gave me a rose and, you know, uh, somebody gave me that mask made out of wire, you know. We'll just show it here so you can see. We got a little mask here of Lord Death, you know, that's kind of very cool. And when somebody gave me a rose, you know. So it's nice. I mean, it's nice that the fans do that. So <clears throat> one fan brought up to me at a table. It was a, a wood burn, you know, a square piece of wood, about yay thick, and it had a burn on it of a character named Huang that I did from a show called Darker Than Black. And I was like, wow, well, that's cool. You made that? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, oh, all right, you know, take that home and put it on the mantle or whatever. It's kind of cool. They said, well, we have another one. And they pulled it out, and it's another wood burn, except this one says, it's like having three dicks. Is that as well? Yeah, right? Yeah. That's in my kid's room. I mean, I'm like, thanks. Uh, you know, what am I going to... Honey, look what a fan made, you know. Um, so I think it's tucked away in my closet somewhere. But uh, anyway, yeah, so I, that was a fun line. And certainly, you know, I wish it would have made it in the game. Kind of don't know why it didn't make it in the game. It's not like it's a, too offensive, you know. It's quite Tim for the whole board line. So, right, for sure. For sure. Yeah, uh, thanks for having us. Hey, man, thank you. Really enjoyed it, man. No thanks a lot. Right, um, if you want to watch more for Sonic on YouTube in the future, please press subscribe. And once again, thank you, Mr. John Swayze. Thank you.